Well, hello there, friend. So nice to see you again. And since I'm seeing your beautiful face, you know that it's Wednesday. And you know that means we have another episode for you on the VIP Collective. So today we sit down with Brittany Gray, founder and CEO of Fancy Face. So go get the coffee. Go get the wine, the popcorn, the Sour Patch Kids, whatever your little heart desires. Get cozy and watch it. (laughs) Or if you're listening, just listen to it. Whatever you want to do. We're here for you. We got your back. Now, enjoy. All right. Okay, are we rolling? Yep. We are. Oh. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. To the VIP Collective. Oh my God. So major. Very excited to have you. Yes. I'm so excited to be here. So for everyone who is watching and or listening, <laughs> we are sitting with Brittany Gray from Fancy Face, CEO and founder. So super excited to have you on because you are entrepreneur rock star. Oh, thank and you. I'm excited to chat with you. So yeah. why don't you kind of give a background and a little briefing on yourself? Okay. Where do I start? In. How far back? Well, are we going? <laughs> Let's go. We got time. Okay. Well, it all started around when I was three. And it sounds silly, but I actually started dancing and that sort of ignited a major passion in my life. Um, I danced until professionally until I was about 26. Um, but I went through the competitive world and did all the performing you know, sort of um, competitive dance shows and all of that stuff as well. Um, Ended up teaching dance and then went into theater and film for dance and singing and acting. I also sort of got into the triple threat side of things as well. Um, And when I was 15 years old, uh, the movie Chicago was coming to Toronto Mm -hmm. and I really wanted to audition for it. Uh, I called my agent and I said, uh, I need to get in to see these casting directors. I want to be in this. And at the time, I looked a lot older than I actually was. Uh, And he basically said to me over the phone, like, Brittany, you're 15. They're casting 30 to 40 year olds for this project. Um, Like, it's just not not going to happen. This one's not for you. Uh, it's, It's it's also very mature content. It, it's the movie Chicago with Catherine Zeta-Jones, Renee Zellweger, Richard Gere. Like yeah. it's like a major, you know, adult story. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, okay, well that's fine. I'm just going to go to the open call. So I went to the open call, and there were thousands of women that were trying to get into this movie because it was a major, major motion picture that was coming mm-hmm. to town, and it was like a big deal. So we went through the audition, and um, I went to the open call. And all of a sudden they were making cuts and I was still sticking around. And here I am pretending that I'm like in my 30s and I'm actually 15. Um, So anyways, I ended up booking that film and um, and I started on the project. And it was interesting because we were working with Americans, obviously, and we were like the Canadian talent at the time. And um, and just being able to be there and working with people like Catherine Zeta and Renee and, and watching their process and how intense they were about everything um, and also watching the transformations in terms of the hair and makeup as well right. that kind of ignited that side of me and then also because I was always sort of passionate about makeup even through elementary school and high school as well I was always kind of the girl that people asked to do them up for prom and um, grad and all of that <clears throat> Anyhow, being on set, I just it really ignited me to want to do more of that. So I continued on to basically do quite a few Disney films. I worked with Megan Fox and Lindsay Lohan. I was actually Megan Fox's dance double in um, Confessions of a Teenage no Drama way. Queen. Yeah, oh, cool. Um, so that was really cool. And then I went on to do um, television. I um, did, uh, did acting roles in um, Hallmark movies. And uh, and then recently I actually just did a project for the Family Channel and Hulu, which is like kind of the Degrassi age. It's called Holly Hobby. It's going to be out in November. But basically, I, I went through this whole side of myself pursuing that. I always thought that that was what I was going to want to do. Meanwhile, on the side, when I was doing actually a theater project at the time with Mervish um, called The Producer. Oh, no. Was it The Producers? That was before. It was actually We Will Rock You, a little bit older. Mm-hmm. Um, I decided that I wanted to go to, to school for makeup because I was doing it. I'd do eight shows a week. And then in the mornings on a two-show day, I would work a, work a wedding and do wow. weddings. Um, so that was like a grueling schedule at that time. Um, but I wanted to be certified in doing makeup because it was something that people were asking me to do a lot. So I just thought it was time to to be educated in that as well. 
So when I was 20, I went to school, I got my certification and I opened Fancy Face and Fancy Face was always the name that I had given the company ever since I was 20 years old. And uh, the whole notion of like the team that we have now was created because I was in, um, you know, acting and singing and dancing. I was pursuing that. I didn't always have the time to just be there myself. So Mm -hmm. I started curating a team. And at the time, there were no other teams. So that was kind of like a new idea. Um, And it slowly sort of took over my entire life. <laughs> at 20. At Well, not at 20. At 20, it was still obviously growing and it was so new and it was just a baby at the time. But over the years to, the, to where I am now, it really chose me, I feel like, mm-hmm. more so than me choosing it. Mm-hmm. Um, because I like my choice was always to pursue the acting side of things and right. the singing and dancing and all of that. Um, but Fancy Face, I feel like, was more of like a, something that was just in my blood, like doing makeup was just something that felt so natural. Um, and I guess people sensed that and appreciated that. And I always think it's wise to go towards things that other people appreciate and like the value that you bring to other people. So as much as I loved performing and loved bringing joy to people on stage and on film, it's a different sensation when you're actually like, you know, making someone feel better about themselves on the outside and in turn on the inside as well. So it it was kind of cool how that all transpired because it wasn't like people always ask me with fancy face, like, was this like a plotted decision Mm -hmm. to get it to this point today? And if I'm honest, no. Yeah. Yeah. But that's kind of the cool part is of the life of journey in general is just that you start going this way. Yeah. And then, and you're still doing that. Like you're still pursuing your acting and then you're still doing, and now you're doing your other passions. Yeah. So you're kind of getting best of both worlds. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's interesting. I didn't, I didn't necessarily, after I I had two children recently, I have a one year old and a two and a half year old. I'm going to ask you about in a bit. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But I thought I, I thought I had hung up my performing arts acting shoes and um, the role that I booked recently uh, would just sort of my agent sent it to me and he said that he thought I would be good for that part and I read through the script and um, it was to play a country music star oh, in cool. this TV show which I shouldn't really be talking much about but um, but it just I love country music and I love everything about all of that so it just felt like a really good fit and okay. I usually wouldn't w- waste my time at this point with the busyness of Fancy Face to go to an audition mm-hmm. But it just so happened it, it worked out. And it's it's always so interesting when you let something go. And I believe that, that it, if it comes back to you, it's, you know, it's... It's meant to be. Yeah, it's meant to be. Or it's something you should at least look at because yeah. it's seeking you again. Yeah, which right? is fascinating in that world because for performers, it's always such a chase. Right. So it's nice to actually sit back and let those things come to you sometimes. Wow. It's kind of like a good life, life lesson sometimes. So, but you've been doing this since you were 20 then. Uh, the performing arts side of thing the or business. Fancy Face? Fancy, uh, face, fancy right? face has been open since I was 20. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So how did the, you went to school for it? I did. Like, I went to Complexion. Okay. Uh, which is, I believed it's named something else, but it was an international school of makeup and oh, wow. it, it um, was very like desirable to go to it. Um, but I basically did a bridal and fashion makeup course there. I tried to go for the least amount of time, which I'm happy I did mm-hmm. um, because you educate yourself so much outside of school. Um, and I felt like my teacher at the, at this particular place was not necessarily someone that I would aspire to do makeup like. So I was just ready to get my certification and get right. out. Yeah. True. Do you have a mentor or did you have a mentor? Like- I did actually, when I first got out of school, um, actually maybe a little bit around 24, 25, I, um, decided to work doing makeup on, so you think you can dance Canada. Mm-hmm. And there was a makeup artist, Lynn Ryan, who, was amazing for so many reasons. First of all, she brought me sort of under her wing and taught me how she does makeup for television, which was really cool. And I sort of transpire that to my brides now because so much of it, like what you do is on camera. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, just the techniques with the dancers, obviously sweating so much and making sure that it stays and looks amazing throughout the whole show. Um, but she was incredible because she actually... She was so professional that she never wanted producers to be walking by and her team to sit and look like they were being kind of lazy. Mm -hmm. Um, So we always had to stand and be alert and present and ready, um, which it was kind it was kind of like an intense way of doing things like like you don't sit all day long. You're always standing. You're always alert. But it it 
I sort of use things that I learned from, from her in my own way with our team. Um, but that level of professionalism isn't always found in the makeup and hair world. Yeah. A lot of times people come in looking disheveled. You know, their hair is like in a messy like bun. Looks like they haven't even showered that day. Right. They come in, they have their kit and things are all messy and not polished and clean and look like they've been, you know, run over with Lysol wipes. <laughs> so I'm really I'm really particular about all that with my team and making sure they show up looking ready, present, you know, happy, alert, all of those things. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've just, I learned a lot from her. She was a really good person for me at that time. It's like, and that's, they're representing your brand too, They right? are, so. yeah. And you have to figure out ways when you own a brand to stand apart mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so can you sense that when someone comes in and meets with you? Can you sense I kind can. of immediately if the they're going to The second I open the door, yeah. I know if I'm going to hire them. Yeah. And I, I, it's weird because I obviously do my research beforehand before I, I, I maybe interview 10% of the people that that submit Mm -hmm. um but yeah the second i open the door i I just get a sense uh, from people and and i think there is some sort of a statistic about you know the first seven seconds that you meet somebody you get something from them and you you know whether it's going to be a win or not yeah especially Um, in your uh your profession because a lot of it is like you know with they want to make sure your hair and your makeup is done yes you know like you're saying you don't want to show up necessarily yeah and with a bride and with clients that are trusting you with their face and their overall aesthetic on very important days you want those first seven seconds to be impactful so that they trust you. Mm -hmm. It's really important. Yeah. And what do you think is the most like rewarding part that you have? Uh, I think it's always really rewarding to, especially with really shy, introverted, uh, self-conscious women Mm -hmm. that haven't looked themselves in the mirror and, and liked themselves. I think it's really fun to show them the confidence side and to make them look at themselves in a different way. Mm -hmm. And with that, I think they can go out into the world and, and if they see them and feel about themselves in a different way, they can do things differently and maybe, you know, a bit more like they've always wanted to. Maybe when they walk in, yeah, they don't seem maybe as confident, but when they leave their heads oh, on yeah. much higher, right? Oh my gosh, yeah. I think it's, it's like, like when I go day. to when I go get my hair done, and it's yeah. just like, where can I go tonight? You like feel like you're calling yes. all of your friends, going, yeah. can we go out? Of course, and <laughs> we have that good. happen all the time. Like yeah. when when brides are doing trials and they don't have something booked, they're like, right. oh my god, I need to make the most of this. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's true, and I feel yeah. like sometimes the. I feel like the brides have their trials and then they do an engagement shoot sometimes. They do. Do they or, back that up so that yeah, they some, can... I mean, it can um, go either way, like engagement photo, bridal shower, trial, and then right. wedding. Like it, it, it bounces all over the place. But yeah, we usually get a couple times to really explore like... You know, their inner, I always say diva and diva can be, you know, taken as not a good word, but I actually think of it as like a really positive right. word. And, mm-hmm. um, and I... I just think it's like, it's just nice to find that side of every woman. Right. You know? Like some strength. Instilling yeah. some strength and yeah. confidence. And yeah. Because we all wake up the same, yeah. you know? And yeah. then when you, it's, it's all what you do mm-hmm. to put yourself together to feel good. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, so your team is 25 right now? Is that how many girls? Yes. It, yes. It fluctuates year to year depending on edits that we make to it. Um, but in Toronto, I believe it's around, there's a, probably around 30 of us with like the back end team as well. Wow. Um, and then there's closer to eight in Vancouver because we're smaller in Vancouver. We opened quite a bit later. Yep. Um, what was yeah. the decision to go to Vancouver? Well, actually... It's, I fell in love with Vancouver because I actually shot a film out there mm-hmm. um, when I was probably 16. What's it called? Actually, maybe not 16. Um, it was Once Upon a Mattress. Okay. And it was with um, Carol Burnett. Hmm. And so, I mean, wow. she's an icon. Yeah. So that was really cool um, to work alongside her. But um, I was there for a full summer and we had an apartment and I was there with all the other singers and dancers and... Um, And I felt it was such a beautiful summer there in Vancouver. It was so sunny and it wasn't as rainy as it can be. Um, But it was just like one of the best summers of my life. And when I thought about where we would launch another... um, another location it was just like a no-brainer because I love spending time there and it's Mm -hmm. so different from here and whenever I go there I just feel so good like it's such a great place for just being calm Mm -hmm. I think um so it was it was like a no-brainer for me I lived in Vancouver for a bit did you yeah did you love it I loved it yeah it would be like it's really special weeknights you could go it was just such a calm place like you said and you could go for bike rides around the ocean and like nature it's nature of it yeah Yeah, it's so different from like downtown Toronto it's very different it's very (laughs) different and it's almost like a small town city yeah because I would walk down the streets at 7 p.m and I'm like where are the people I know (laughs) but in a good way because it felt like you kind of had your city to yourself 
of course in a way so. yeah it's wonderful it's a, it's interesting because it's so expensive to live there but i find the mentality is so different from here like it it's is. more expensive than here but mm-hmm. yet the hustle um is a little bit more calm there yes yeah right yeah the, everything here is a little bit more elevated yes <laughs> Yes. So do you go to Vancouver quite a bit? And you know, kind of before visit I had or? my my children, I I did more mm-hmm. often, and I that's definitely my intention uh, for next year. I'm right. I'm going to focus a lot more on that. But um, sometimes I feel like there's only so much one can do. We manage everything from here. Right. Um, Tiffany, who basically is our booking concierge, as we call her, she mm-hmm. manages all the bookings from Toronto, um, and she um, she's just been amazing at making sure that everything runs smooth, smoothly out there. But um, it is important for someone like myself to spend time there and actually show our following and our audience that we're we're present there as well. Absolutely, um, which is my focus for next year for sure. Do you think you're going to go elsewhere outside of Canada, or what's kind of the? Um, I would love to. Right now, we just on, uh, launched an a online shop, so right now we're focusing on shipping to the U.S. Right now, which mm. is a bit of a, like a whole different ball game. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would love to launch. Um, I would love to launch locations in the u.s it, it's it's just something i would have to figure out yeah yeah it's just like a step it's a stone process. of figuring yeah. that out yeah and my dad's an entrepreneur as well and he has a company in the u.s and in canada so okay, he so informs me about how much work it he can takes. offer you some insight on that yeah is he involved in products or is he, he is yeah he's involved? in um his company's called backyard brands yeah um and he is in the water care business for the most part oh. um pool care hot tub care um also um a lot of green more green products for the pool and hot tub and um salt water care as well oh nice yeah it's always cool when a parent is an entrepreneur or something because yeah. it really trickles down it like, does did you feel like you saw him do something in I your did. younger years and yeah 100 like, percent. i mean i used to live in his library he mm-hmm. he is a huge like self-help kind of mm-hmm. book person um like tony robbins and all of those people he yeah you know, would read all of their books and they would be all over our library. And I would just spend hours in there just scrolling through his books, making notes. Like I just, I grew up in his library. It was probably the best education for me more, more so than school. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Are you reading anything right now or anything that anyone should know about? Well, right now I'm reading an Instagram marketing book. Okay. Um, by Matt something. (laughs) <laughs> it's a mad dude. It's a mad dude. I think there's a book in that bag there. Or it was in the car. We went to Is it good so far? You know, it's pretty good. It was written, I made sure it was written in 2019. There's just like, there's just some things with Instagram I always feel like you want to stay on top of. Yeah. So um, It just changes so fast. That, it does. Like, yeah. I always look, when I'm looking at Instagram books, yeah. like I look at the year because I'm like, hey, 100%. what year is this? Don't or read a 2017 on, book. Don't read 2017, <laughs> even on YouTube if it's like yeah. uh, Instagram from 2016. Yes. I'm like, okay, I can't watch that because yeah. now it's not relevant. But. Yeah, I'll text you the book yeah, later. Yeah, do it. Yeah, I want to yeah. know. Um, yeah, that book I'm reading. What else? I, I've read a couple books by Rachel Hollis, like yep. Girl Stop Apologizing. That yep. was a good book. Mm-hmm. Um, like and any books that have been like changing to mindset oh or anything boy. like that? Oh, boy. You know what? There are so many. Um, there is one. There was one book um, called The Key by uh, Joe Vitale. Okay. I read that back when I was living with my parents. Like I was young when I read that book. Um, but it changed the game for me. It sort of made me realize that so much of what we want begins here. Right. And like, we just have to get into the right mindset. And, um, uh, yeah, it just, it, it sort of changed like the whole fabric of like my, my makeup. Isn't that funny that you yeah. can find a book that kind of, yeah. makes, like literally is lights on. Yeah. I like, reread I it all the time. That. Yeah. How about for you? Yeah. I have one of them that I really enjoyed was called Mindset. Okay. And it was by Carol Dweck. Okay. And that book, I, I'm an audible girl, so yes, I listen love to that. everything. Same. It's like the audible yes. or the automobile university. So yes. when you're driving, <laughs> you're like learning everything 100%. because it's the only time you can yes. really do that. Yeah. Kind of, depending on your yeah, lifestyle. Your lifestyle, yeah. yeah. What's happening. Yeah. Um, but that book for me was really eye-opening. Yeah. And then a lot of business books. Yes. The E-Myth is a yes. big one. Do that's you know that one? one? Yes. That's a really yes. good one. So I've listened to that one a couple of times. Yeah. Because it's funny that you listen to it once and you hear things, yes. but then you listen to it again and you hear it a different way. Oh, 100%. So it takes yeah. a long time to kind of hear yes. the message, but... 100%. If you invest the time to listen to it. Yeah. 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 So. Podcasts are the be- the best right now, too. Yes. Like, there's a lot of great information on podcasts Yeah. Well. Are you listening to... I 
listen them? to a couple. I listen to um, oh god, are they mostly ones? business or are they like um, are there makeup I podcasts? I do. There are. I listen to quite a bit. Okay. So lately, I've been listening to. There's one called "The Brand Is Female," "The Boss Files," um, "The Influencer Podcast," "Rise Pos- Podcast." That's actually by Rachel, Rachel Hollis as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the icons. You know, Mimi Icon. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I like her. I like the, her stuff. Yeah, um, she just did uh, a, an interview with a guy on there called the London Real. It's also yeah. really good. Um, yeah, there's such a they help though. Like they I always do find help. if like I just feel stale because a lot of times it's really hard for people to get together in our industry yes. or in any industry yes. really. And so yeah. if you want to continue growing your mindset yes. and like listening to things about business or yes. certain things it's nice to be able to have that outlet to 100%. just turn something on and be like yeah eye opening and I feel like it, I don't know if it's this like I don't know maybe it's always been there but I feel like with the podcast world too people are sharing their knowledge so willingly now more than I feel like ever yes. before yeah. um, I mean obviously with authors and stuff like that you could always get great information but now I feel like you know people that you wouldn't necessarily normally get information from you're just you're getting their secrets and it's pretty cool yeah it's the ability to have access to people who you would never have access to 100 percent. like yeah. think about it pre-social media yeah you could never because now you can actually dm a person yes and hope for the best they might write you back 100 percent. And, and a lot of people do, do. Yeah. yeah so it's just a whole new world it is yeah it really is so your yeah. instagram's pretty on fire <laughs> It's Let's talk about it. Uh, I feel like it's one of those things where uh, while you're growing it, like we've always grown it organically. We've never mm-hmm. bought followers or any of that. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't even know who does that stuff, but apparently people do. But I, um, I've i always been really adamant about making sure that every follower is there for like a meaningful reason mm-hmm. and not just, you know, um, for no other reason than just to be a follower. But yeah, um, but yeah we have a really great... Uh, audience and a lot of them are based in Canada mm-hmm. uh, we do have some US as well mainly women um, and in that age range of like really 18 to 60 um, plus um, and it's been really cool to to sort of see the effect on people it's it's interesting there's there's moments where I'm like is it doing well like should we be at a hundred thousand followers plus it's always that weird thing as mm-hmm. an entrepreneur you're always trying to grow it but I find it so interesting because when we're out in public, especially in Toronto, like I feel like lately I can't, I can't step out without someone saying like, oh my God, like, yeah. So, and which is always a bizarre thing because there's moments where I feel like, and I think most entrepreneurs probably feel like this, like, is anyone noticing sort of what we're putting out there? You kind of have that, those moments, but then uh, you get that reassurance every once in a while when, when people are like, Oh my God, I like, I just, I'm so passionate about what you guys post. And that's really cool. And I'm always sort of trying to find ways to intertwine, you know, positive messaging and empowerment and all of those things into what we do as well, especially Mm -hmm. with the videos that I've been doing on IGTV and YouTube. Um, so it's finding ways to bring more value to people as I'm all like, I'm always thinking about. And it's almost better to have an audience of like, 30,000 yes. who are super invested in what yes. you're doing than yes. 100,000 who are just there for fluff or 100%. you don't know what they're there for, right? Yeah. And so you have like your core people. Yeah. And I feel like it's, I mean, it's mainly women. So that's really cool. I feel yeah. like we never get weird comments, comments or anything. Like they're always, you know, positive comments from other women that are really invested in what we're putting out. So that's always cool too. I'm loving the new trend of like female entrepreneur. Like it's, yes. it's more of a, everyone's coming together. Not yes. that it's a trend because there's always been female entrepreneurs, yes. but now I feel like people are yeah. starting to come together and actually support each other, which 100%. is really neat. And you just did a masterclass recently. Yes. So what was that? Run me through because I saw some really cool stuff. I'm yeah, like, that doing? was really fun. <laughs> um, so that was our first public masterclass. So yeah. we, we've promoted that we've done internal training before and we've done some really cool stuff for stuff like that. But this was the first time that I felt ready to step out and have an actual, you know, day of teaching people that might have been inspired by what we've done thus far. Um, and the turnout was really great. I wanted to keep it small. We had around 50 women wow. um, and we did it in the distillery. Um, and it was just like a really girly, amazing day. And I, I talked quite a bit about business, actually, because it seemed like people wanted to talk about that mm-hmm. um, and obviously educated them. We did two, um, two bridal looks. Um, but there was a range of women that that, 
you know, know nothing about makeup. And then there were also professional makeup artists. So we, we kind of opened it up to every woman. And it was really nice to see like the organic flow of the day. There wasn't really like a difference between what people wanted to learn. And it was it was it was really good for like the soul. It was a really good experience for me and I would do it again. And to hear like what other people's journeys are and yeah. how you can help them because yeah. of where you are in your journey. So yeah, it's always- it's a tricky thing when you when there's moments where you're like like why am I doing this? Like is there anything to really there's moments where you just think like is there anything for me to teach right now? Like I should still be growing and learning. But I think it's it's a realization that, you know, other people are out there wanting to learn from your experiences thus far, even though you might still feel so young in what you're trying to accomplish. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was kind of a cool realization to just, you know, let all of that, you know, I guess I don't know if that's ego or whatever it is. Just go right. and focus on helping other women. For sure. Yeah. And you had people fly in, didn't people? Yeah. Fly in? Yeah. I was it was. Yeah, there were. Good. Quite a few people from the states that came in, and cool. yeah, so it was really, it was really neat. International audience, I like it. I know it was, it's just so crazy. <laughs> Are you gonna do any dancing or anything like that? Oh my god, no! I've hung up my dancing shoes. If I've hung up any shoes, it's my dancing. It's shoes. dancing. Um, however, I do greatly miss it because it was yeah. such a huge, massive part of my life. Mm-hmm. However, my daughter is kind of like I'm, kind of like weirdly. Just seeing, uh, she's basically very much into dance because we dance in the kitchens in the morning. And what's so funny is she's really into like very passionate songs like um, Gravity by Sarah Bareilles. Do you know that song? Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's a beautiful song it's yeah. such a gorgeous song but she always asks me to play like a beautiful song for her in the morning she so calls cute. it the beautiful song um so just seeing that in her is really exciting because it's like i mean i don't care whether she does it or not but it's just fun to see her you know start to kind of be passionate about something weirdly i like that you because your children are just adorable Thank number you. one because it's ivy and nash ivy and nash right yeah cutest name. <laughs> Thank you. But I saw like she's very much into playing with your makeup kit. Oh, she's very much into anything and everything girly. Like my yeah. jewelry, my makeup, dancing, like Is she a clothing. little Britney? Pardon? Is she a little Britney? Um, she is. She has much more fire than I had yeah. when I was little. Like if you uh, ask my parents and then versus what they see in her, she was like born a boss. Like right. she bosses people around from morning to night. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's a major negotiator. Like if you say no, she will work it until you say yes. Yes. It doesn't take no for an answer. Yeah. Um, and she's just like a firecracker. Her personality is through the roof. Yeah. Um, which I wasn't like. I was shy. Right. When I was little. Interesting. Eh? Yeah. I was more introverted, but when I got on stage, I could be an extrovert. But right. she's, I feel like she's full blown. Do you extrovert. think you're both now? Do you have like introvert qualities? I am. And extro- I love my both, alone right? time. Yeah. Like I like decompressing, and being recharging. quiet, recharging. Um, you know, I could be that type of person that if I get invited to a party, would be happy to say no and just be in my pajamas and yeah. watch TV and all of that. But I've learned as I've gotten older that it's good to say yes sometimes when I would normally say no out of fear. Yep. If it's like a genuine no because I'm exhausted, then I'm that's one thing. But um, I think I still have very much both in me. I've just learned to try to silence the introvert a little bit. Right. Because that's sort of where I'll lean. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Did you um, find that when you were growing the business back like – earlier days yeah. that networking was a big part of it was all word of mouth yeah um so i mean social media was not anywhere it was just like the website for the most part yeah. um and i i really believe that i grew my business on word of mouth mm-hmm. more so way more than social media for sure you know what a memory i have of you is at the wedlock show yeah and your booth yeah. that was there and yeah. i i believe like all the girls were in gold or something or you had a gold mirror yes there was something that really stood out to me and i was yes. like oh this we all i think lovely. we all wore your so fancy yeah. t-shirts or sweaters <laughs> And, um, and is there a gold element there gold on them yes okay, it was that's all it was. in gold it was okay. like a gray sweater with gold writing yeah um yeah that was a that was a fun year yeah it was a long time yeah. ago it was that like was 2013 a, or 2012 or yeah, 11 was, like it was a while ago a long time ago but yeah that and i remember seeing all the girls and just standing out <laughs> yeah. yeah oh that's so, awesome yeah that's cool that's my first memory of oh you. cool okay <laughs> i like that we've memory. been on shoots since yeah so oh my god quite a few it's always fun to show up at weddings yes, and see you I and know. your sweet hat i love the hat you wear <laughs> I know, I was like, like I, I, it pained me not to wear it today. Yeah? Yeah. You could. I could have, but I was like, oh, well, I would really go face. with my jacket. Yeah, I would hide your face. <laughs> it would. We need yeah. to see you. Um, speaking of which, I'm going to reclip my clip. Yeah, yeah. We have to do a clip touch-up right now. Okay. 
Did We're you make that? No. Um, so actually, there's quite a few jewelry people that I know. But um, for the master class, we were sponsored by Mimi and Co. Yep. And also um, Cosabella. Mm-hmm. And they made a ton of stuff like this. Oh, wow. For really everybody. Pretty. So it's from one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Has anybody, had any brides wanted uh, We've had, I mean, we have clients reach out to us on Instagram all the time whenever, like, one of us is wearing one of these, asking where they can get them from. Um, I just feel like they're super trendy right now. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. Trendy like my neon sign. I love <laughs> your neon sign. Like, I guess what really, is it about a neon sign that just gets... I don't know. Like, it's just like, it's, there's something about it. It's cool, right? It's so cool. Do you I have one it. for the kids' rooms yet? No. I hear I that's mean, the thing. It is. Right? It is. To- like, I'm way behind the eight ball on that, yeah. for sure. I, yeah. But back in my day, I had a styrofoam, so my name oh. is just very rare. Like Yes. Yeah. Like, some people have it, but yeah. I mean, to find something with your name on it is yes. super rare, and I had a styrofoam cutout, and oh for God. me, I hung it on the door of my oh bedroom, my God. and I was just like, this is Corinne's room, <laughs> and it had like a little rainbow and a sun, but It like, all really matters. For the eh? 80s, that's that really was sticks styrofoam cutouts, like, yes. anything with your name on it, you just love it. Oh, it's <laughs> the best. The best. <laughs> 100%. I had that struggle a little bit with like Britney Spears spelling versus uh, my spelling. Yes. There was a lot of that. I couldn't always find. Because hers is E, yours is A? T-T-A-N-Y, yeah. And T-T- hers is T-T- uh, one T-N-E-Y. Right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I didn't realize. Yeah. My name was cool until all of that happened. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just kind of all, yeah. Yeah. Changed. The only one I know is Corinne Fox. Jamie Foxx's oh, daughter. Yeah. So they have yeah. a new show now called Something Shazam or something. I don't okay. know. But anyways, so she's on it. And oh no way! Like, and I was oh, like, oh yeah, cool. she's like the only person I know. <laughs> anyways, <You're> special. <laughs> that's so good. Special. <laughs> um, so, what kind of advice do you have for? Let's go two ways because I'm sure you're full of knowledge and advice. Mm. So, advice for people. In business, okay. in, but in makeup business. So okay. let's say like a piece of advice for makeup business and then also a piece of advice for the actual craft of okay. what you do. Do you have? Um, okay, so for the makeup business, um, I would say it's imperative to build a team that reflects who you are. That's my piece of advice for that. Um, and slowly? Slowly, like, did you? Find I would that- say, yeah, one hundred percent. I would say, trust your gut when it comes to people, for mm-hmm. sure. Um, would you? Okay, so if you brought them in and you thought, okay, I, I think this person could be a go. Yeah. Do you put them through a system where they do a couple yes. of trials with people? Yes. So we have a shadowing process. So once they once they get the interview with me, it's usually about a two to three hour time frame. The initial interview. Once we've decided to. Um, potentially take them on they're kind of on a probationary period for about three months Mm -hmm. um they start shadowing they have to shadow 10 bookings so they have to go Mm -hmm. and watch our team in their craft doing their thing and how we behave how our customer service operates all of that um so that's quite a few hours and then they come back in for a formal training with me which is about a four hour window of time where we go over everything they do another um full glam two looks um we critique it and then we actually um basically walk them through all of our processes as well so that they're well, you know, adjusted to the culture of the team before they step out on their own. Um, They also feel so much better about that because they've met all the team by that point. Usually after 10 bookings, they've met almost everybody Mm -hmm. and they just feel like a, like a part of the unit. Mm -hmm. Um, So, um, so yeah, but, but building your team, I think is the most important part. Um, And yeah, I, it's, I mean, it's not always the easiest, I would say. Um, but when you find the right people, it's, it's, there's nothing better. Right. Yeah. Do you put it like a, did you at one point put a focus on, okay, I'm going to look for people. This is what's happening for these couple months. Um, I have organically it's just, it's just built it. Yeah. Um, and there's times where things change up. Like there's been seasons where there's been a changeover or I need to hire different people, um, or, or just like freshen it up again. Cause mm-hmm. sometimes, especially we've been doing this for 14 years, things can kind of get a little, stale mm-hmm. in a in a way or like just not the best 
energy that it could have and i think new blood is always good to be bringing in um i think that a lot of entrepreneurs kind of get stuck with their people and feel like there's nobody else that could do it like these people Mm -hmm. i think i would encourage entrepreneurs to never be afraid of change right because change and i know for me this year because i i went through a bit of change not too long ago with our team but i've never felt so much power um and like internal power like um and power is not maybe the right word but strength is a better word mm-hmm. I've never felt so much strength um, just having new energy come in and I think when you don't change especially after so many years yeah it, it just kind of plateaus and you need some more excitement right you, need you do to kind of keep you do and also turning like, over a new page um, new people really uh, I, I also think another sort of tidbit of uh, advice is to always make sure that you're hiring people that do a better job than you do at that particular role like especially our back end team um, um, Tiffany who works with us uh, doing the bookings like so her job is very 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 hard she yeah. schedules about 500 weddings a year about 2,000 special events a year oh she's dealing with brides from the top of the morning until she, uh, she, regularly she, um, our clients say that the, she responds to them at like 3 a.m. if they email her like wow. she's up late too. I would never want to do her job. Yeah. So you have to find people, but yet she's amazing at it. Mm-hmm. She's incredible at it. Mm-hmm. Um, so finding people, and I hired her right, right out of um, university actually, and she's been with me for seven years. Oh, wow. So there are people that really, and sh- like she is better than me at doing what she does. So finding people that, you know, do a better job than you would at certain things is all is amazing if you can find it. Yeah, because then it gives you the opportunity to think and grow elsewhere, right? Yeah, you don't even and you have, have to, think to do that. This yeah. portion of the business. I mean, and that's the great thing about having my dad actually, who was an entrepreneur or is an entrepreneur. There's moments where he'll come by because he lives in New York. He'll come by and he'll sort of see what I'm doing around. And there were moments earlier on where he'd be like, "What? Why are you? Why are you doing that right now? Like something like, you know, um, like physically writing out all the checks to the artist." Right. Like why? And, and I think that's important to obviously watch your money in, in a business, but that's not something that I need to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I can oversee those things, but that's taking up my time when I can build the business. Yep. So just being really picky about your time and letting, again, your ego go out the door and you like you don't as an entrepreneur have to do everything mm-hmm. you need to you actually can't. You can't. You have to. <laughs> yeah. And that was a, that was a really hard thing for me mm-hmm. was letting go and, and trusting people and, and trusting intentions and making sure that you surround yourself with people that you trust. Um, yeah. It's nice that your dad can kind of give you an outsider's point of view as well. right? Yeah. My dad and my mom have both been amazing for different reasons. My mom is always like a really like emotive, supportive mm-hmm. I met person. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's just always been the most amazing support in that sense. Mm-hmm. Um, sort of like cheerleading me on. And then my dad, same with my dad, but my dad has been like a really great coach Mm -hmm. business wise as Mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Would you suggest to someone to find a mentor if they're getting in? 100%. I I believe that you are the sum of the people that you surround yourself with. Um, And uh, what do you think is a method to find one in today's? um, I think you have to, if if that person or those people are not in your circle, you have to broaden your social circle for sure. Um, Talk to people about what you want to do, what you want to accomplish. I think when people see someone who's passionate, they'll, a lot of people will take you under their wing in a sense. Like they'll help you, they'll, they'll coach you. But I think you have to, like I said, broaden your circle so you're meeting different people, saying yes to going place, places, doing those kinds of things. Um, and then getting picky. Once you have a bit more of a social circle, getting picky about who you spend your time with. True. Yeah. Even like the master classes, because yeah. everybody who's going there has one goal, which yeah. is to learn and grow in this craft. Yeah. So a lot of those people would be drawn to each other. Yes. More or less. Yeah, right? for sure. And then what's a question that you get from brides all the time what's like a, a general question that you think um is there one specific I think it's the the main concern for brides is longevity in terms of their hair and makeup lasting yeah um preparation like their skin prep and all of that they're always coming to us for making sure that they prep it in the way that would look best under makeup mm-hmm. um same with hair um and 
I think I think a lot of brides want to make sure that they look really beautiful in person, but also flawless in pictures. Right. And I think that that's the struggle, especially for brides that want to look really natural, extremely natural in person. It doesn't always transpire really well on camera. So that's the only thing that um, we're usually coaching them on is especially the very natural brides to just come up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then for the brides that are like way over the top, maybe taking them down a little bit so that they're more of it like in a timeless space so that they're not going to look back and say like, whoa, what did I do? You know, what's really funny is that so I live behind the camera. Yes. Since doing this. Yes. I would do makeup and then I would go on camera and I would be like, where did my makeup go? Yeah, it disappears. disappears. Yeah, especially under lights and all of that. And so then I started to understand the term TV makeup. TV makeup, yeah. And there's a reason for it. There is. Because with the lights and everything, it it gets lost. Yes, it does. So it's really interesting. So it's mainly coaching brides on that, I would say, for the most part. Yeah. And then brides are also very concerned about their timing the morning of the wedding. Of course. Which is why we feel like it's great to go with a team because you have, you know, all those hands working to get things done. For us with makeup and hair, because we're always doing it in the morning for the most part, six to eight is the time frame that disappears in like a second. Right. It's the weirdest thing. And we are always coaching our brides to just start a little bit earlier. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's your wedding Give day. Yes, you want to sleep in. But but mm-hmm. it's one day. Get up early. Make mm-hmm. sure that you can. Because for me, for my wedding, the, the photos that I absolutely love the most and the video, all of that, like the video parts, mm-hmm. um, were the morning of the wedding. Mm-hmm. Like obviously I loved you know, seeing Mark and I get married, but you as a bride, you're going to love those getting ready pictures. They're so, they're so important. Mm -hmm. And if there's so many brides that, that want to sleep in and want to make sure that their bridesmaids sleep in and they want all this time to relax in the morning, but then they don't get the, and their photographers don't get the opportunity to really capture them as, you know, that morning bride. Yeah. The authentic part of the morning where they're Yeah. It's so important. Getting ready. Yeah. Yeah. Bridal makeup does have trends for sure. I mean, in terms of like, for example lashes like I'd say 14 years ago massive lashes on a wedding day were not really an option but now brides want them all the time like I'm wearing obviously a large pair today and not that they'd want them to this scope but a lot of brides actually do so things like that become more trendy Mm -hmm. Um, it might actually reverse back where people just want extremely natural all the time and there's there's a mix but things like that do happen um lately in terms of 2019 i've been seeing a lot of brides wanting like more of a sort of matte brown smoky eye on their wedding day like that but that's not overly dark just kind of gives them the definition um but that i've been noticing as a trend the interesting thing with bridal makeup is that the trends aren't like a purple smoky eye this Mm -hmm. year it's like very subtle minor changes obviously glowing skin is really popular people are always looking to people like j-lo for like that the tones of like the bronzy the glowy the you know Mm -hmm. um soft lip is always very very on trend um it's just more of like a natural option for a bride but i think for the most part it's always brides wanting to really pop out their eyes and then just have like a kissable looking lip i'm gonna be selfish and ask what a ginger should wear on her eyelids i always i would say always warm browns warm browns Mm -hmm. for the most part is like the best thing that you can wear yeah yeah yeah. Right? Like earth tones. Tones. Yeah. 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 I feel that. Yeah. It's really pretty. I live in and that. And it's so, it's so classic. Like, yeah. You just can't ever go wrong with that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'll be doing. Uh, great. <clears throat> okay. So last question. Yes. Before we wrap up. Yeah. Um, so what I like to do is ask p- our guests okay. either to pose a question for future guests. Okay. And or our audience. Okay. Um, of something that you're interested in knowing. I think my main thing that I would probably like to ask is, I guess it could be to other professionals and the sort of social audience as well, is with brands, for example, like my own, do you like seeing the personal elements mm. come in of the actual owner of the company uh, and maybe some other people that are, you know, helping? run it like like for example when I post my children or little behind the scenes moments of my life is that adding to the value of what you see online does that you know or or does it take away I think that's always that's always the question that I have because I feel like in this day and age the brands that I follow I love those little like snippets of um just realness Mm -hmm. um but I've also heard other people say like don't do that. Yeah. Um, which I 
I think in my gut, I know that it's good to show a little bit, but mm-hmm. that would be my question. That's a great question. Yeah. Because I've thought that too. Yeah. And I'm like, and I went that route and did a little bit more personal stuff. Yeah. And was getting feedback saying like, hey. Positive feedback? Yeah. Positive okay. saying we want to see more, do more stuff yes. on camera. So. Well, I think it makes you relatable. A hundred percent. And yeah. I think being relatable in business is really important. I think it depends on your what profession you're in totally like, you know with yeah. yours too you want to build a connection with your audience totally which, and yeah yeah and i love seeing all the little snippets like yeah I'm well it's interesting and, it, and it's hard to know like when you're running a company and when you're the you're the sort of face of a company if people are sort of just saying like oh that was so cute if they actually mean it mm-hmm. or like because i hear that a lot too about those personal moments but um i think it would be it would, it would just be cool to get like really honest feedback from yeah. what people love to see more of or maybe um, outsiders, because I do also yeah. know you yeah. outside of this. That's true. And so yes. I like seeing a lot of yes. your personal stuff. So, so people that don't people know who you. who don't know yes. you, are they just coming to your page because they want to see what just you're doing? Just makeup, just hair, just, just looks. that, or do they want to get to know you? So exactly. Kind of That's like, the question. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Yeah. That's a wonderful question. Okay, good. Um, okay, well, we're about ready to wrap up. Is there all anything right. else you'd like to I just want to thank you. Or? And like honestly, congratulations for all of this. I oh, feel like it's you. such a, an amazing thing. And there's so many people in this industry that have so much to share, including your yourself who's going to interview you <laughs> i don't know me <laughs> we'll come back and interview yeah <laughs> you have to do that yeah yeah because no, sure. people need to know more about you too yeah yeah i think it's important i love the idea of just getting to know everyone because For sure. we see each other briefly yes. on shoots but i just like the yeah. idea of sitting and just chatting 100 percent, sharing it with other people i'm gonna come in so. here with like a major list for oh you. my god <laughs> <laughs> You're going to put me to the test. I am. I'm going to want to know everything. The other side. Yes. Yeah, you I need to do to. that. Yeah. Okay. No, we'll I'm do that. Done. Yeah. Add that it. to the 10th person you have to interview coming okay. up. Okay. Or 11th. 11th. <laughs> 11th. Okay. Well, thank you for coming. Yes, and of course. And we're going to see you again soon. All right. Sounds good. All Thanks right. for having me. Bye. Bye. <laughs>